everyone, today we are going to talk about error handling. In a logic app perspective, error handling refers to the process of detecting, managing and responding to errors or exceptions that occur during the execution of a logic app workflow. Error handling is crucial to ensure the reliability and resilience of your logic app as it allows you to handle unexpected situations and take appropriate actions. Here are some key aspects of error handling in a logic apps and how they can be managed. Error detection. Logic apps provide built-in capabilities to detect errors during the execution of individual actions or the entire workflow. Each action in a logic app can have its own error handling mechanism, and errors can be categorized based on their severity and impact on the workflow. Exception handling. When an error occurs, logic apps can be configured to handle exceptions by defining specific error handling. For example, you can use the scope action to encapsulate a set of actions and apply exception handling within the scope. Within the scope, you can catch and handle specific types of errors or exceptions using conditions and actions like condition or control connectors. Retry mechanisms. Logic apps offer retry policies that allow you to automatically retry failed actions or trigger certain actions in response to errors. You can configure the retry policy with it parameters like the number of retries, interval between retries, and the type of errors to retry. This helps you dealing with temporary failures or transient issues that may occur during execution. Error handling actions. Logic apps provide a variety of actions that can be used to manage errors. Some common error handling actions include terminate to stop the workflow, initialize variable to store error details, send an email to notify stakeholders, or post to a Slack channel for team communication. These actions enable you to respond to errors based on specific requirements. Logging and monitoring. To effectively manage errors, it's important to have visibility into the execution and error details. Logic apps integrate with monitoring and logging services such as Azure Monitor and Azure Log Analytics, allowing you to collect and analyze logs, metrics, and traces. This tool can help you identify patterns troubleshoot issues and proactively monitor the health of your logic apps. Custom error handling. Logic apps also support custom error handling scenarios by allowing you to define your own error handling workflows or integrate with external systems for advanced error management. For example, you can use connectors like Azure Functions or Azure Logic Apps custom connectors to implement complex error handling logic. When designing a business process, one of the most important design considerations you need to keep in mind is what happens when things go wrong. By default, logic apps allow us to handle errors by using the configure and after settings at the per action level. This is what common programming languages like C Sharp do. Line 5 will only be executed if line 4 executes with success. Line 7 will only be executed if line 5 executes with success, and so on. If an error happens on one of these lines, the function or program will be interrupted there. The same behavior uh, happens on logic apps. An upcoming action will run if the current one is finished with success. However, in logic app, we have the possibility to easily change this behavior and kind of implement a try-catch per action level. But first, let's talk about the configure run after, to understand what it is and what allow us to do. Now let's consider that we have this JSON payload, and what we pretend to do is to send a request via Postman to a logic app consumption, and the logic app must be like this. We start with the trigger when HTTP request is received, and we generate the schema with the payload JSON on the trigger connector. After the schema is generated, let's initialize two variables. The first with the name age, and the type must be an integer, the second with the name name and the type must be a string. In each of them, you must dynamically choose the content, in this case, the name, that was generated previously by the schema. Next, add a send email action from Outlook, and you can use the same structure as we did. Of course, with this, since the name is not an integer, the logic app will fail. But since we are talking about errors and error handling, this is exactly what we pretend. Next, we are going to send a request to this logic app and check the runs to understand what happened. Of course, we had a failed run, and the message in the action tells us why this logic app failed, and it makes total sense. 
that request, the variable age of type integer cannot be initialized or updated with the value of type string. The variable age only supports values of type integer. The problem with this situation is that the logic gap stopped when the error occurred, and all the other actions were skipped. This means that ultimately we did not receive the email we are expecting. So how can we still receive the email after all? To solve this, we can use a run after. And to do so, click on the three dots on the variable name and then click on the configure run after. Next, configure the run after, meaning that the variable name should only run after the variable age has failed. As you can see, a red arrow will appear between the two variables, indicating that the run after is configured. As you can see on this run, the variable still fails, but the logic gap do not stop because of this. The email with the name is still delivered, as you can see. But of course, this is a very simple, yet powerful scenario to learn from. Its purpose was to show you how we can overpass errors that might broke down our logic gap workflow. By understanding this, we can now dive deeper into more complex scenarios. In this next example, as you can see in this picture, by default the upcoming action will run if the previous one is finished with success. Initialize var with HTML body email template action will run if the FA monitoring API connections report action is successfully finished. Send Azure API connections broken report email action will run if initialize var with HTML body email template action is successfully finished. And this behavior makes all sense. Note that you cannot configure the run after settings for the first action, in this case, the FA monitoring API connections report, because that depends on the trigger execution. Now, let's assume that we add a logging shape to track some information. There are better ways to do this, this is just a POC sample. Normally, these tracking actions should not break your business workflow if something gets wrong with them. Let's say the service was offline. Should we miss an invoice just because we can't do tracing or logging? No. To avoid that, we can on the action below in our sample, the initialize var with HTML body email template action, change the default run after setting. And to do that, we should click on the three dots and select the configure run after option. Click on the logging sample to expand the properties and select the following options. Is successful, by default already selected, has timed out, and has failed, and click done. So now, the initialize var with HTML body email template action will be executed even if the logging sample action fails, give a timeout, or is executed with success as we expected. The important is that we will not impact the critical logic of your business workflow. And you can apply this strategy to all shapes, use it carefully, and according to your business logic. This can be perfect for a simple business process, but in more complex or real enterprise scenarios, there will be situations where you want to handle errors for multiple actions in a single place and implement specific tasks if a failure occurs. Let's dive into implementing advanced error handling. Most users tend to think that scope is a strange action that is not there to do anything other than to help you organize the business logic a little better inside the logic app. But that is not true. The reality is that scopes have many functionalities, like region statement, the capability to organize your business logic and have specific areas that you can collapse and expand whenever you need it, try, catch, finally statement, advanced error handling capabilities, and it is the second capability that allows us to implement advanced error handling capabilities by creating a try catch statement consisting of a try block followed by one catch clause to handle different exceptions that can occur in the try block, or creating a try catch finally statement. Once again, this is quite normal on traditional programming languages like C Sharp, where we use a try catch and try catch finally statement. The try catch finally statement handles some or all of the errors that may occur in a block of code. These errors can be coding errors made by the programmer, errors due to wrong input, and other unforeseeable things. The try statement allows you to define a block of code to be tested for errors while it's being executed. These will be your actions inside the logic app that describe the logic of your business process. The catch statement allows you to define a block of code 
to be executed if an error occurs in the tribe walk. These will be your actions inside the logic app that you want to run if something fails. The final statement lets you execute code after try and catch statements, regardless of the result. If there was a fail inside the try statement or if everything was completed successfully. Note that the catch and the final statement are optional, but you need to use one of them, if not both, while using the try statement. To implement a try catch or a try catch final statements in a logic app, we need to add a scope. We can call it try scope. Add all the actions that you want to control errors inside this scope. Just immediately after the try scope action, add a new scope. We can call it catch scope. Add all the actions necessary to perform in case of errors, like rollback actions or logging actions. Now on the catch scope action, click on the three dots and select configure run after option. Click on the try scope to present the run after options and select as failed as timed out, and select the Is Successful option and click Done. With this, we have implemented a try-catch statement. Now, if you want to implement a try-catch finally statement, we just need to, immediately after the catch scope action, add a new scope. We can call it finally scope, and add all the actions that will be executed no matter the try scope is executed successfully or if the catch scope is executed. Now on the final scope action, click on the three dots and select configure run after option. Click on the catch scope to present the run after options and select all the options. Is successful, as timed out, is skipped and has failed. And click done. And there you go. We have a try catch final statement implemented. Important note. Even inside the scope, we can implement kind of a try catch per action level. Hope you have enjoyed this lesson and we will see you in the next one.